Energy is central to our lives. It powers our economy and almost everything we do. Over time, we've devised many ways to produce the energy we need from Earth's natural resources. Today, about 60% of the energy consumed in the United States comes from fluids that are pumped from the ground. Since the first oil well was drilled by Edwin Drake in 1859, oil and natural gas have become major sources of the nation's energy supply. New methods for extracting oil and natural gas from rock make it likely that development of these resources will grow well into the 21st century. Geothermal power, in use for nearly as long as oil, involves pumping hot water or steam from the ground, and its use is also expected to increase. Experience has shown that some of these energy production activities have the potential to cause seismic events or earthquakes. Other human activities, for example, the creation of large dams, have also caused seismic events. We know that human activities can cause earthquakes because in some cases we see a spatial and temporal correlation between those human activities and the earthquakes. An example is the Rocky Mountain Arsenal in the 1960s in which wastewater was pumped underground and there was a correlation between the volumes of fluid that was pumped underground and the number of earthquakes that occurred over time. Felt seismic events associated with energy activities are relatively uncommon. They have been documented at only about 50 of the many hundreds of thousands of energy-related wells and sites in the United States. However, recent earthquakes near wastewater injection wells in Texas, Arkansas, and Ohio have heightened public awareness about human-induced seismicity. The National Research Council was asked to address the issue of induced seismicity from energy technologies because of the apparent increase in magnitudes and frequencies of those events over the last decade or so. Earthquakes can happen when conditions change just enough to affect the stress on a pre-existing fault. Most earthquake-prone regions are along Earth's tectonic plates. Faults within tectonic plates are also common, but some of these faults may not be exposed at the surface and are not always easily mapped. To date, most of the felt seismic events associated with energy development have been linked to the withdrawal of oil and gas during conventional drilling. The rest of these events are associated with the injection of fluids into the ground during energy activities. These earthquakes have occurred because the fluid balance in the rocks was not maintained changing the stresses in Earth's crust near a fault. The rocks of the Earth's crust are not solid. They have voids, fractures, and cracks. And those voids, fractures, and cracks are filled with fluids, naturally. That fluid has a pressure, and that's called pore pressure. If that pore pressure is perturbed, either by pumping fluids into the Earth's crust or extracting fluids, that can change the stresses in the Earth's crust. If energy projects maintain a balance between the volume of fluid that is injected and a volume of fluid that is extracted from the crust, that will have a minimal impact on pore pressure and therefore a minimal impact on crustal stresses. The relationship between energy production and induced seismicity is best studied and understood at the geysers, about 75 miles north of San Francisco, an area with well-monitored natural seismicity near the San Andreas Fault Zone. At the geysers, native steam from one to two mile deep wells flows to the surface and spins turbines that generate electricity for hundreds of thousands living in Northern California. Geothermal wells were first drilled there back in the 1920s. Following renewed activity in the 1960s, seismometers that had been used in the region to record natural seismicity allowed USGS researchers to record new, small seismic events in the geysers region. As energy development expanded, so did this low-level seismic activity. By the late 1990s, plant operators began injecting treated wastewater into the wells to produce more steam, which, in turn, has produced more earthquakes. These earthquakes have not resulted in any significant level of damage. The seismic experience in the geysers has taught us quite a bit about induced seismicity. The area has been under production for the last few decades and has been heavily um, monitored with seismic instruments. What was learned in the geysers is that there is a close relationship between the injection wells and earthquakes. The earthquakes are small and have been felt by local residents. 
Operators at the Geysers meet regularly with local residents and officials and government regulatory agencies to discuss field operations and recent observed seismicity. A system for receiving, reviewing, and approving minor damage claims has been established, and this system appears to be mutually satisfactory. To meet increasing energy demand, the nation is rapidly developing more unconventional oil and gas resources. One such resource is found in shale formations. Because shale holds oil and gas tightly, conventional drilling and pumping are not very effective to extract those fluids. Instead, a combination of horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing, often called fracking, is used. Oil and gas-rich shale reservoirs are typically found at least one mile or more below Earth's surface. A borehole is drilled vertically into the rock formation just above the target shale and is then curved horizontally into the shale formation for up to two miles. After the well is encased with cement and steel to prevent seepage into groundwater, a perforating gun shoots small holes through the casing and cement. Next, a pressurized mixture of water, sand, and small amounts of chemical additives is pumped down the well and forced into the rock, creating fractures along the horizontal well. These fractures help release the rock's tightly held oil and gas so that it can flow back up the well along with the fracking fluid. Of the many tens of thousands of wells that have been hydraulically fractured for oil and gas in shale in the United States, one has been potentially related to felt seismic activity. A few cases of small magnitude earthquakes induced by hydraulic fracturing have been reported in other parts of the world. Hydraulic fracturing is not considered a high risk for induced seismic events because the volumes of fluid are small and the, the extent of the uh, operation is short-lived. Although hydraulic fracturing itself does not pose a high risk of inducing earthquakes, disposing of produced water from it and from other energy and industrial operations has been linked to several small earthquakes. In the United States, produced water is disposed of in many tens of thousands of injection wells. In 2008 and 2009, a series of magnitude 2.5 to 3.3 earthquakes were felt in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Because Dallas is not generally tectonically active, a network of seismometers was installed to help pinpoint the source of the seismic activity, which was found near a saltwater injection disposal well. A state tectonic map later revealed a fault in the subsurface in close proximity to the well. There are some seismic risks associated with wastewater disposal wells, and that's because wastewater disposal wells are specifically designed to dispose of large volumes of water over a long period of time. And so the area of influence around these wells can be quite large, and there's a greater chance of intersecting a pre-existing fault in the subsurface. The same risks that accrue from disposal of wastewater might also apply to a relatively new technology, the capture and underground storage of carbon dioxide to help address global climate change. Carbon dioxide released from coal burned at power plants would be captured and injected as a liquid into very deep underground rock formations. So far, only small volumes of carbon dioxide have been injected at a few test sites in the United States, but storage of much higher volumes is being proposed. The risk of carbon capture and storage is that large volumes of CO2 are proposed to be injected over a long period of time, and we just don't have experience with these large volumes as they relate to induced seismicity. Although it's not possible to eliminate all risk of induced seismicity, it can be reduced. Efforts by government agencies, in collaboration with private industry, to reduce those risks need to be guided by a combination of continued research, best practices, and agreed-upon protocols. Outreach to the public prior to and during development of energy projects is also vitally important. It's important to understand risks associated with induced seismicity because then we can take measures to control those risks and we have more confidence about protecting people and property. The induced seismicity protocol developed by the Department of Energy for geothermal technologies we feel is a good template for the other energy technologies to follow in dealing with the risks and issues associated with induced seismic events. As we gain a better understanding of the risks of induced seismicity and put better protocols in place, 
we can make positive strides towards safe energy production.